Hi everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to do another lecture for the fourth year students of the Home Bible College. This is lecture number 29 and it's all about the work of a deacon. In fact, the proposition is that the Christian deacon works alongside as a team, alongside of the elders on behalf of the church and may be involved in parachurch activities and mission work such as poverty relief and other non-preaching ministries that's the point it's non-preaching ministries now when we look at this subject it's a very interesting subject to look at the qualifications of a deacon initially we would have to turn to acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 7 uh, it says in, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied there arose a murmuring of the grecians that's the the israelites who primarily spoke greek against the Hebrews and that's the Israelites who mainly spoke Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration now who are the people doing the complaining it isn't the widows it says because they're widows so it's possibly the sons or the family are moaning on behalf of the mothers then the twelve called the disciples unto them and said uh, called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said it isn't reasonable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look out from among you seven men. And then they give the three uh, qualifications for these early deacons. The first is they should be of honest report. These are to be men who are known to be honest. Not just that they're honest, but that they're known in society as being honest men. They are to be men full of the Holy, Holy Spirit. These are to men to be men that are guided, empowered and ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, they're to be men of wisdom. They're to be men of wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge is just the accumulation of, of facts that we know. Wisdom is the application of what we know to given circumstances. Now they said we appoint seven men of these of these qualities and and whom we will appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This play this saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man of full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip and Procurus and Nicanor and Timon and Pharmanus and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set over the apostles, whom they sent, who they set over the apostles, before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly, and a great number of the priests were obedient to the faith. So this was successful. The apostles were able to concentrate on their spiritual work of preaching and teaching and the deacons took all of the responsibility away from the apostles of having to deal with the matters of feeding the widows. So the work of a deacon then is something that's described here in this very early passage. However, Timothy mentions it again in his first letter to Timothy, Paul mentions again in his first letter to Timothy, chapter 3, he says, this is a trustworthy saying, if anyone aspires to be an overseer, he desires a noble task. An overseer then must be, and he lists all the features of being an, an overseer. Now, an overseer is an elder, someone that looks out for the flock. But of course, the overseer or the elder is not just um, a pastor the overseer is also an evangelist and let's just quickly look at the various qualifications he, they are to be above reproach they're to be the husband of one wife they're to be temperate self-controlled respectable hospitable able to teach okay not dependent on wine not violent but gentle peaceable free from the love of money an overseer must manage his own household well he must keep his children under control and he must not be a recent convert and he must be a person who has a good reputation with outsiders. So that's the qualifications of 
um, an elder and or an overseer. And of course, those that teach the church and those that teach the unbelievers are all um, overseers. However, he then turns to the qualifications of a deacon. And that's the bit that we really want to concentrate on today. He says the deacons likewise must be gifted, not double tongued, not given to much wine or greedy for money. They must hold to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. That is, they need to understand the scriptures. Additionally, they must first be tested. And then if they are above reproach, let them serve as deacons. Now it's very interesting that here in the middle of this section about deacons, he breaks off in the center, in the center to make a comment about women. He says, in the same way, the women must be dignified, not slanderers, but temperate and faithful in all things. Why, why, why break off and talk about women in the middle? That's because there would be women deacons too. Okay, it doesn't mention anything about female elders, of course, but it does talk about female deacons. And then he goes on. He says a deacon must be the husband of one wife. So you see, he switched back to talking about the male deacons. They must be the husband of one wife. They must be a good manager of the children and they must be a good manager of his own household. Now, for those that have served well as deacons, acquire for themselves a high standing and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So this is no menial task. This is no light duty. This is heavy duty. This is important duty. This is spiritual duty. These men, they may have to count money. They may have to distribute bread, but they are chosen for their spiritual qualities. They're chosen for their godliness. They're chosen for their wisdom. What a great honour it is to serve as a deacon. Now, there's no reference when you talk about the qualifications of deacons. There's no reference to them. There's no requirement for them to be teachers of the scriptures. They're not required to be a pastor. They're different to a pastor or a teacher, and they're different to an evangelist but they understand the scriptures and they're holding fast to the faithful word well there we are that's our little lecture for today we look forward to speaking to you next time so have a great day all of you bye for now